So the non-human cyborg entity known as Mark Zuckerberg is trending right now with people talking about his latest article talking about regulating the internet with, of course, the help of the government. This RT article reads, Zuckerberg asks government for more internet regulation in self-flagulation exercise. <laughs> That's definitely one way of describing it, but Mark Zuckerberg publicly toted and talked about the controversies that the social network Facebook has been involved in, which we've been talking about a lot on this YouTube channel, specifically around the events that unfolded in New Zealand, allowing, of course, a live stream video to be viewed by 4,000 people before, of course, Facebook took it down. Facebook is now coming out saying that they need more government regulation to play a more active role in policing the web. <laughs> the web. Uh, in a statement, Mark Zuckerberg said, we make decisions about what speech is harmful, what constitutes a political advertising, and how to prevent sophisticated cyber attacks. Now, uh, that's a loaded statement in itself because um, if you've been paying attention, we have been documenting time and time again how Facebook censorship has been very politically biased, not only against right-wingers, uh, but also specifically uh, against uh, people who are anti-establishment, like the Free Thought Project, the anti-media, right? Rachel Blevins, uh, Dan Dix, and all other people who had their pages completely taken down that weren't playing into the political dichotomies but were predominantly anti-establishment. Facebook has taken down a lot of those ideas. They also have been in such a rush to gain uh, power and money that ultimately the system of Facebook has been abused many times over not only in the public sphere, which the mainstream media is also decrying about special interest buying advertisements or information about users, but predominantly just the sick, vindictive ways that Facebook has been data harvesting all your private information and selling it to the highest bidders. Now, Mark Zuckerberg went, went on and he says, there are in, uh, these are important for keeping our community safe, but if we are starting from uh, scratch, we wouldn't ask companies to make these judgments alone. He's talking about how to prevent uh, a lot of these harmful things. Uh, going on, more regulation over what constitutes harmful content could set a baseline for what is prohibited and require companies to build systems for keeping harmful content to a bare minimum. Uh, I mean, this is a loaded statement to say the least, Jason. There's also a four idea plan released by Mark Zuckerberg on the Facebook newsroom uh, you know, website. What are these four points that he's pushing out there, Jason? And what's your take on all of this? You know, before we go one by one on each of these points, I want to just point out one quote that was highlighted by RT because it really does say it all. It's, it's, it's really the bottom line in all of this. I believe we need a more active role for governments and regulators. More active governments and regulators gets better by updating the rules for the internet, so not what Facebook or not a website or not conduct, we need to update rules for the internet more control. We can preserve what's best about it. Well, who decides what's best? Is it is it Facebook? Is it the government? Is it the regulators? It's certainly not individuals, because if it was individuals, we just let free speech reign and people would say what they want and there would be no repercussions, but let's continue. Remember, these are internet regulations from the government to decide what's best and preserve that on the internet. The freedom for people to express themselves and for entrepreneurs to build new things while also protecting society from broader harms. We have to protect society with the government, but preserve what's best. Think about all of those oxymorons right there. Yeah. They don't make any sense. So we're going to go right here, one by Wait, Jason, one. Before we, get sure. into, before we get into the one by one points, to me, this is a bigger kind of case of, of Mark Zuckerberg, who is in trouble, kind of groveling to the government, saying, hey, uh, you guys take control of this. I don't want to have any responsibility for the misdeeds that he did. Because Mark Zuckerberg did commit a lot of misdeeds. I mean, just recently, Facebook stored seven years of passwords in plain text, but it's okay. They're trustworthy. Don't worry. They're working on artificial intelligence, which Mark Zuckerberg said, yeah, it's, don't worry about it. It's not a big problem. I mean, it's incredulous, the behavior that has been exemplified by him, not only in starting uh, Facebook with the comments he made 
about how people are just idiots, but uh, just the way that this company is run shows you how terrifying it is with how much information they have on you. And again, uh, another element here is, uh, like Barack Obama said, companies like Facebook wouldn't exist if it wasn't for the government. A lot of seed funding, a lot of things that were done underhandedly that made Facebook the most kind of popular social media uh, platforms out there that it is right now. But now they're performing, hey government, <laughs> we got to protect you from, from, uh, from society from harms. Ultimately what they're saying is we have to tighten a grip of control uh, to make sure the plebeians don't get any smart ideas to rebel against the ruling class. That's pretty much what they're saying in my opinion. What about you and let's go over these four points. Sure, before we get to the four points, when you talk about Zuckerberg coming out and doing this and admitting all this wrong, I think this is because he is really in the last throes of running that company unless he fully accepts what the government wants. Remember, the shareholders want him out. There's tons of different entities that want lawsuits, government regulations, hearings. There's been a lot of talk of Zuckerberg not being in control of that company. So when he does this, when he writes something like this, the establishment loves it. So we're going to get to that first point. First, harmful content. Oh, harmful content. We better, we got to look out for the harmful content. Harmful content. Facebook gives everyone a way to use their voice, and that creates real benefits from sharing experiences and growing movements. As part of this, we have a responsibility to keep people safe on our services. Oh, it's your responsibility. Now, I would say safe from things like child pornography, murder, violence. They do a very poor job of that. But yeah, they should have somewhat of a responsibility. They don't do a very good job. Uh, that means deciding what counts as terrorist propaganda. Oh! Oh, now we have to interpret what terrorist propaganda is. Let me remind everybody what the definition, at least before the Patriot Act, of terrorism was. It was when somebody would do something violent in order to create political change. Therefore, terrorist propaganda, in reality, pre-9-11, is a very narrow definition. Post-9-11, forget about it. You could probably just say about anything as terrorist propaganda. Next, hate speech. Who defines friggin' hate speech? I mean, we're talking about, we did a story today, folks, you can check out on uh, the backup channel about a man that had to pay $55,000 out for one, injuring someone's dignity, and two, acting disorderly. That's, that's, and it's all about misgendering. With words. With just words, Jason. That's yeah, no, the absolute insanity of it. No, Keep no it going threats here. Of, yeah, yeah, no threats of physical violence, but that's hate, hate speech. All right, so remember, this is just the first point. So let's finish up just this little first uh, uh, paragraph here. Hate speech and more. So now it's not just terrorist propaganda and hate speech. It's terrorist propaganda, hate speech, and more. The definition of that is anything we don't want you to say or hear. We continually review our policies uh, experts, but at the scale, we'll always make mistakes and decisions that people will disagree with. Well, yeah, everybody, we're not the Borg. We don't have groupthink. Disagreement is part of human culture, Luke. So what is that? That is a convoluted first step to more government regulation over speech and nothing more. That's all that is. Well, this, yeah, this is what it always was from the very beginning. This is why government seed funding and private intelligence seed funding and all these private corporations connected to them seed funding these bigger institutions had all along, I think, a bigger plot and a bigger deal here. I mean, Facebook not only sells your information to the highest bidder, to the you know biggest uh, private entities out there, to the corporate entities, but also specifically to the government, uh, stifling all of your information, just saying, hey, here you go. Take anything. Spy on all of the citizens. Know about every little last detail. And it's absolutely insane the level of databasing that they do on you on that specific platform. We talked about this. We even did a video, Jason, not so long ago talking about how this soon looks like this will be the end of uh, Facebook with major top executives leaving, with major investigations. And I'm looking. I just typed in uh, Facebook into kind of the search engine. And everyone's saying, you know, uh, he's calling for more outside regulation. He's calling for tougher internet regulation by the government. And then uh, the bigger takeaway here is um, this won't save him from the investigations that are currently going on against the Zuck. Uh, this is important to understand here. He is in trouble. He is uh, in battle. He is uh, facing a lot of severe repercussions for a lot of uh, actions that he did that he should be held accountable for. 
probably a lot more uh, stuff that we don't even know about uh, is, is even going on there. But publicly, uh, he's in trouble, to say the least, right, Jason? Oh, he is. He's very. I mean, they haven't even talked about ACR software, the automated content recognition that spies on you constantly. They've just really talked about the big data and the analytics, um, selling that information to others when he said it was private. You know, just all the lies he told during the Fusion GPS scandal. But, you know, Cambridge Analytica, all that other stuff, don't worry about it. No big deal. No big deal. And, and it really was just the tip of the iceberg. But let's, let's see what his second solution is. Now, remember, we need more government, less speech... We got to identify terrorist propaganda and more. We need protection so we can preserve the best parts well, of the they internet. Say, they, they say they say terrorist propaganda, but really they're just blanketing that as an excuse for more uh, control of other speech that they just don't like. Uh, oh, this this speech goes against the government that we're working with, or this corporation that we're let's just call it terrorist. Let's just shut it down. And we've seen people been called terrorists for just simply having political ideas that someone didn't disagree with. It's a term that's having uh, becoming lost its meaning. But let's go over these four bullet points yep. as quickly as we can, Jason. Yep. That's so number two, three, and four. Yep. So the second is legislation is important for protecting elections. Facebook has already made significant changes around political ads. Advertisers in many countries must verify their identities before purchasing political ads. We built a searchable archive that shows who pays for ads, what other ads are ran, and what audience saw that ad. So what is this? This is total surveillance on anybody who's buying political ads, takes place in political ads, looks at political ads. It sounds like they're actually going to be surveilling more your political thoughts and restricting political speech because we know, we know from the algorithms and the shadow bans out there that even if you paid for an ad, if they don't like it politically, people don't see it. So now they're saying the government needs to step in. Well, and well they, they don't want another decide. Cambridge Analytica scandal. Uh, that's what they're trying to prevent here, which, again, is, is a small scandal. Uh, what's number uh, three? What's the major third uh, talking point here that, of course, they're trying to publicly look uh, like, like they're good on? In reality, they're one of the worst corporations out there. Sir, sure. Third, effective privacy and data protection needs a globally harmonized framework. Do you see what they're calling for there? Globalization. Oh, they love the European Union. They love the United Nations. They need, we need a global in entity to regulate the Internet and have a framework for data protection. Think about what's being said there. A global harmonized network. We've heard that before. And it's, it's NWO, New World Order Talk, to the T. People around the world have called for comprehensive privacy regulation in line with the European Union's general data protection regulation. And I agree. Oh, do you, Zuck? Did you love that Article 13 got passed? Did you love the fact that they're going to start censoring memes and other content when they say, hey, we own that? That t-shirt yeah. you bought, it has a logo that we own. You can't be in that video on there. We yeah. own that. Well Go ahead. Those those are major blows. Those are major regulations and blows against Google, against Facebook. Those ramifications are still going to be played out with how countries are going to determine to uh, interpret Article 13 and Article 11 that are going to be having vast ranging uh, ramifications. And um, again, the bigger thing that's happening here is it's billionaires fighting billionaires uh, pretty much leaving us in the middle, uh, undetermined with what the future is. But obviously, to me, this is just Zuckerberg trying to save face, trying to save his company, trying to save his reputation from everything that uh, a lot of people are describing as a major sinking ship. Uh, all right, what's the last uh, kind of talking point that he had? Again, some of the, he, he uses very kind of middle-of-the-road language. He talks about things that you know a normal person reading would agree on, but obviously there's more to this. There's more layered here. There's more information uh, that, of course, people need to be aware of. And, of course, just a lot of distrust because uh, so, some people just don't deserve our our trust, especially powerful people, and we should be very skeptical of their points. And the last point, what is that, number four, Jason? Yeah, actually, it's probably the most ambiguous one, Luke, so that really speaks to your point where it's not really defined, and people would have a hard time, I would have a hard time disagreeing with it in principle, but in my opinion, it may be setting up something more nefarious. So he says, finally, regulation should guarantee, remember, we want to bring in regulation, we want to bring in government, but they have to guarantee quote unquote, the principle of data portability. If you share data with one service, you should be able to share it with another. So uh, that is uh, very peculiar to me. What that, I believe, may 
mean for a big corporation like Facebook, for instance? So let's say Facebook is getting shut down by the government or it's getting broken up or it's going bankrupt. You could then take all of that information, all the data that you've gotten on all your customers, all your user base, and then transport that into another company that may be similar or different, but use some of the principles. And that way you don't lose that intellectual data property, be able to sell it again and again using big data. Uh, that's my guess what that is. But again, it is very ambiguous, Luke. I mean, it's just simply, uh, it's a little too late there, Zuck. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to use the government to, I think, my, in my personal opinion, have uh, sort of like a bailout, uh, especially against the repercussions that he's facing. People are waking up. People are using Facebook less than ever. We did another video about how millennials are getting off of Facebook. Uh, it's only a matter of time, I believe, since they become the next MySpace, and the people vote with their clicks, vote with their usership, and uh, it's extremely important to realize you, the person watching right there, sitting wherever you are, listening to this video, you are powerful. If you decide not to use a platform, they don't have anything over you. They don't have any information on you. They can't extort you. They can't use you to gain monetarily uh, any income uh, from you and your private information. So uh, again, uh, that's why we appreciate everyone who watches these videos, who's an important critical thinker, who does their own homework. You're voting what your dollar just by watching this video, just by sharing this video, just by liking this video. And uh, you guys mean a lot to us because if you guys weren't here, uh, we want to be here. Jason, cut me off unless you have something else to say on this bigger topic. But uh, I'm going to end it here. Uh, stay tuned for more. Four videos a day now on WeAreChange.org. We're going to have a lot more coming here your way every single day. It's a lot of videos. 28 videos a week? That's a lot. Stay tuned for more. Love you. Um, WeAreChange.org.